Welcome back to my channel. It is Candace with the K here where I normally talk books, beauty, and kicks. I am really excited to share my review of this book because I am a Jasmine Guillory stand, Jasmine Guillory Hive stand up. Okay, I've been down from the beginning. I've read every single book and so I'm really excited to share her latest which is called Drunk in Love. Okay, if you are interested in hearing my review, please keep watching. So by the time this video is posted, Drunk in Love will be available for purchase. So be sure to hit the link down in the description box to get your copy. I know you probably haven't sat with it yet and that is okay, but we're going to get into it. I'm going to give you my spoilers. But before I do all of that, the summary of the book. Okay, so we meet Margot Noble, who is CEO of Noble Wines up in Napa Valley. Side note, love Napa Valley. One of my favorite places to go just for some good R&R. If you've never been to Napa, go. Margot ends up having a one night stand with Luke Williams, who ends up being her employee. So imagine how awkward that is when they realize that Monday morning comes and this is her new employee. That's the very bare bones summary of the book. If you want to read it and then come back, make sure you come back because here I'm about to get into it. So before I really jump into what I feel about the book, I must tell you that I had an advanced reader copy. So my copy of the book might not be what is published to date. So I can only speak on what I read. The story may or may not have changed. And so I'm just going to give you just a great, you know, like a basic overview of how I felt about the book. Anybody who has read a Jasmine Guillory book knows that it is just rom-com, sappy, corny, fall in love quick, but also kind of spicy. So this is exactly what you get from this book. You've got a very simple storyline where you have the CEO of, of a vineyard or yeah, vineyard. And um, you have Luke who is um, going through his own personal troubles and kind of needed to get away. They end up in a one night stand. The one night stand sparks this feeling of wanting to be together forever until they realize he's the new hire. So they have to navigate how to move through that because they still want each other, but can't mess up the boss employee dynamic. And then you have um, him quitting and then they fall in love and then they get into a very petty argument and then they rekindle. <laughs> the thing about this book is that they try and make the age difference between these two big. Like Luke is 29 and Margot is only 34, but they try and really make it seem like she's a cougar out here. Like when they insinuated that he was younger and she was older, I assumed already that she was going to be like 45 and he was going to be like 25 or some like big gap. In that situation, they could have been in college together. So it really wasn't that big of a deal, um, the age gap between them. One thing that I found hilarious is that Luke did what the ultimate under 30 year old would do in a situation with his mother in that he didn't come out and be very forthright in telling her like, mom, I'm not actually with her. I'm just talking about his best friend, Avery. He kind of like led his mother to believe that he was dating a Avery, even though they're just best friends. And he couldn't stand up to his mother, honestly, because like all of us, like how can you really tell your mother no or tell your mother something when your mother's mind is made up, their mind is made up and you kind of just let them run with it. But for it to eventually become an argument between Margot and Luke, I thought was kind of cuckoo. In a month span, these two fall in love, but what really crumples their relationship is their relationship he has with Avery because he's think Margo is thinking that the relationship with Avery is much more than what she's let on, particularly after um, Luke's mother kind of insinuated like, oh, aren't they so cute when uh, um, Margo was having an event at her winery. I just felt like, and this is just, more mature me speaking me younger I would have gotten upset at something like that but you offered him the space to provide explanation so why are you really upset was kind of how I felt and in the book she kind of explains like yeah that was a stupid argument but on top of that he also lied about sharing this interview which Luke 
came from a tech company. So I'm assuming he was somewhere in Silicon Valley, somewhere in San Francisco, working at big tech. We could talk Fang, probably the Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, because he was coming from hostile tech work environment. So we can automatically assume it's Fang. Um, and he had left the job purposely because it was a hostile work environment. And he felt like he was being undervalued. Yet, once he got to Napa and realized like he still actually needs a big boy job, he went back to interview with the same job he left because some of the major key players in his dislike for the company were leaving. So he didn't disclose to Margot that he was going on said interview. And when she told him, excuse me, when he told her, she got upset. This is right off of the heels of them having this argument about Avery. So it was like one argument compounded on another. Speaking from the more mature me now, it's still something that I don't think I would get upset about because you're offering him space to explain. And I think what adds to that is that this relationship is only a month old. So placing those great expectations on open communication that early just doesn't seem realistic to me, not to say that it's not right. Open communication should exist in every relationship, platonic, friendship, romantic, what have you. But for me, it's in that month span, I'm still trying to understand if this is even lasting and what it's worth. And some of that is ex explained from Margot's perspective. She knew when Luke was coming into town, he, was, he told her he was only staying for a few months. So she kind of, I don't know, she says it was kind of placing expectations on him. Are the expectations warranted? That's what the reader has to decide. So for me, I'm going to say, nah, like, girl, just be easy. Live in the moment. Be present. I constantly tell myself and my friends, like, be present. The person that you are with may not, you may not have forever. So enjoy the now, right? Right. I don't have any siblings, so I don't really know what it's like when a sibling is in disagreement with another one and how that works. Um, in this situation, we see that like Margot is kind of holding resentment towards her brother because he fell in the passing of their uncle who gave them the, the winery that Margot should not have inherited it. And... If I would have overheard that from my sibling, in that moment, I would have said something instead of harboring those feelings. I also understand everyone is not confrontational. Everyone can't really speak up for themselves and that is fine as well. But in that instance, if I'm hearing my brother talking mess to, about me to another family member, oh, let's, let's, let's settle up here. Um, but that's just me. I really think this was an easy read. I finished this book in about two days. It was very simple. I'm a Jasmine Guillory stan. Like I said, regardless of the book, I'm going to read it no matter the story, no matter the plot. I don't really highly rank these books because I do consider them as just like, they're, I don't want to say they're not thought provoking. Every piece of literature is, but they aren't anything that distracts you or makes you feel very heavy. It offers insight into relationship perspectives and I think Jasmine does a great job in just doing that so giving me another angle of how to look at an argument giving me another viewpoint of how to um, see how family members and siblings interact with one another I am going to tell anybody to read this book because I'm gonna support Jasmine forever okay and as long as she keeps churning books I'm gonna keep reading them on and on and on because she's got me you've got me hooked girl Shout out to, uh, you know, getting this advanced reader copy because I enjoyed it. Be sure to like this video, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow Candace with the K Reads. That's where I post all of my readings and my opinions. Tell me what is your favorite Jasmine Guillory book? I can tell you mine. So my favorite was The Proposal. I really enjoyed that one. Um, but I also liked... Um, I can't think of it right now, but I'm gonna put the cover here because I really like this one too. So see you guys in my next video. Peace.